My name is Jim Caseman. Welcome. We're talking about talking uh, about how to get to know God intimately. And of course, we have to examine all the scriptures, see how God thinks and why he does the things that he does. And as we understand those things, then we can get to know him more intimately and, and, and be more effective in our walk with him. All right, now, <clears throat> we've been talking about Jesus who came into this world literally in the form of a human being in every respect. We talked about recently how he was tempted in all points, even as we were. He came into this world sinless, clothed the same sinful flesh that we have. So now we're coming right up to the point now where Jesus then has is beginning to fulfill his ministry at approximately age 30. And this is really where a lot of the things that we've been talking about come to bear right here. And there are going to be some repetition because you've got to understand some basic principles. If you're not, or otherwise, you'll be totally confused when it comes to the cross, his burial, his resurrection. And uh, unfortunately, only half of the gospel is preached when it gets to the cross. And, I, and that's, it's just lack of knowledge. I have to confess that for many years I had lack of knowledge. But thank God as I continue to meditate on the scriptures, I begin to see the full story of the gospel. Now, we're going to have to remind ourselves of a few things. And um, first of all, we need to understand, and I've said this, and I'll repeat it again. You know, children, as parents, as we raise our children, you've noticed that children learn by repetition and repetition and repetition and repetition. They have to be told more than once what's wrong, what's right, and what to do. Now, the children of God are no different. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That talks of repetition. We need to hear things over and over and over again until it becomes a revelation in our heart and not just something that we mentally ascend to. And there's a big difference between memorizing or mentally ascending with your natural mind and having the revelation in your heart. Big difference. When you have the revelation in your heart, you just know it. You don't have to memorize it. You just know it. You, you know what God means by this and why, why he does it. Why, you just know it. And that's where we need to get to. Now, when I was in school, there were a couple of things like I shared before. And this one, I can't repeat it often enough because people will usually mentally ascend to it. Yeah, I hear it, but they really don't have the revelation as we're going to find out. As we start talking about the cross and Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we're going to see whether if we really have the revelation of what? Spirit, soul, and body. First Thessalonians 5.23 says, I pray God that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. And we went to different scriptures to, to uh, illustrate that. But we have to come to the place where we thoroughly understand I, Jim Caseman, I am a spirit and I have a soul. And the soulish realm is where the, the will, the emotions and everything are involved from your heart, your innermost being and the, and, and, the, and the mind, they're all connected together. And I'm a spirit. I am a spirit. I have a soul. That's where the will and the emotions and everything are in our innermost being, in, the, in my heart. And I have a physical body. My physical body is not me. We looked over here in, 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 in Job and, 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 it, and, it, and we have to get this clear, really clear, or we're going to be confused when we get to the cross. So that's why I... I can't overemphasize. I thank God that I was taught this 45 years ago or whenever it was back in 1974, 75, 
because it absolutely saved my life and helped me to rightly <coughs> divide the word of truth. For example, <clears throat> I'll come back here again to Job and pick it up here in, in chapter 10. Now remember, I'm a spirit and I have a body. I'm a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a physical body. Now just listen to this here. Remember how I did this before. And here's Job speaking in verse 10. Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? Now listen to verse 11. Clothe me. Who's me? Well, that's Job, the human spirit. Clothe me with skin and flesh. Clothe me, human spirit, with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews. So I am a spirit and I have a physical body. It's just like John 4, 24. God is spirit, and those that worship him must worship in his spirit and truth. Now, the only way he could redeem mankind, God as a spirit. Jesus is God, God's son, come in the flesh. Jesus is God, but Jesus is God the son, God the father, God the son, God the spirit. They're spirits, no body. But now, in order for God to do his plan of redemption here on the earth, he has to have a body. He's a spirit. Jesus is a spirit, God the Son. And he took on the form of a human spirit, literally in every respect. But he couldn't fulfill his plan of redemption on this earth without a physical body. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 says, You have given me a body. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14. The Word. Now, Jesus is the Word. He's called the Word of God. He is the Word of God. God the Son, the Word of God. The Word, verse 14 says, was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Word, the Spirit, the human spirit. He took on the form of a human spirit. The Word did, but he needed a body. So, Jesus has a physical body. Jesus is a spirit. And he lives in a physical body. Initially, he came into this world as a human spirit. And he was clothed with a physical body. Now, you know, we could look at other scriptures, but I probably should, you know, as long as we're at it, I'll come back again and repeat this portion of scripture here in Philippians. And I'll pick it up here in Philippians chapter 1. And it's the Apostle Paul that's speaking. Now, I want you to listen to this now. This human spirit versus the physical body. Paul said in verse 21, For to me, who is me? That's Paul, this human spirit. The Bible is addressed to the human spirit, not to the physical body. It's addressed to me. My physical body is just this earth suit. It's just as what I'm clothed with on this earth. He said, for me... To live is Christ and to die is gain. But now listen to this. Verse 22. But if I live, who is I? Paul. That's Paul speaking. Paul is a spirit, a human spirit. He says, but if I, if I live on in the flesh. So if I live on in this physical body. This will mean fruit from my labor, yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell. See, the human spirit, that's Paul talking. I, 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 I. Not his body, his body isn't talking. And verse 23, for I am hard pressed. Who's I? The human spirit, Paul. For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, nevertheless, to remain in the flesh or in this physical body is more needful for you. Now, if he was to go on into heaven, his body would be dead. The body without the spirit is dead. James 2, 26. My body needs me. <laughs> and, and so, but if my body, if I decided to go, if Paul decided to go on to heaven, then he wouldn't be, there's nothing more he could do for people. He, in order to work and preach the gospel in this physical dimension, Paul had to stay in his physical body. As long as his physical body stayed alive, he could preach the gospel here on this earth. All right. So 
I am a spirit and I am clothed with flesh, a physical body. Now, uh, I suppose we could come back here then another familiar passage as well. I, I believe it's familiar for most everybody. And I'm coming back here to Psalms 139. And I'll come on right down here. Oh, to um, four, verse 13 of Psalms 139. Now, here we go again. For you, talking to God, for you, God, formed my inward parts. What's he talking about? The human spirit. You covered me in my mother's womb. Now we saw in Job chapter 10, verse 11, what did Job get clothed with? Flesh and flesh and blood. Flesh, ninus. And so he said, you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. I want to come back here to uh, Psalms 139 and pick it up here in the Amplified Bible. For you did form my inward parts. You did knit me together in my mother's womb. See, that's just exactly what was said in Job chapter 10 verse 11. I will confess and praise you for you are fearfully and wonderfully, for you are fearfully and wonderful and for the awful wonder of my birth. Wonderful are your works that my inner self, that's me, he's talking, that's the human spirit, that my inner self knows right well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in a secret and intricately and curiously wrought as if embroidered with various colors in the depths of the earth, the regions of darkness and mystery. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape, even as yet there was none of them. Well, this goes back to where God knew before the beginning of time. He already knew you and me. Isn't that something? Before we were even created and uh, formed in our mother's womb. All right. Well, we ran over on this one. We're out of time. We'll talk to you next time when we get back together. Amen. <laughs>